The famous Epiphone Prophecy. I had one of these in the Midnight Ebony finish and it was actually my first ever electric guitar. But it wasn't my first choice and I ended up getting another guitar within a month. I'm gonna use this beautiful Midnight Blue Sapphire Epiphone Prophecy to tell you the story of how I got my first electric guitar. <laughs> This is the story of me buying my first electric guitar and I'm gonna try to make it short. It was all the way back in 2011 and up until then I wasn't making much money. The biggest salary I've got was like 200 bucks or something. And I had just got a new job that paid well. My first salary, it was time to get my first electric guitar of course. The Epiphone Matt Heavy signature were just released. I wanted one of these but it wasn't available. Back in 2011 I didn't live here, this is the capital city where most of the shops are, so I couldn't come to a shop and check it out, so I called the guys that have Epiphone and Gibson. Fun fact, the shop that sold me my first Epiphone is behind this wall right next door to me, small world huh? Back then I wasn't living here so I called them up on the phone and asked, hey guys I want the newly released Epiphone Matt Heafy signature. They say, well, we don't have it, but we do have something similar, the Epiphone Prophecy. Before I saw the Matt Hefe, I was looking at Prophecies too, the older model with the lightning bolts. So I say, okay, give me a couple of minutes to think about it. I hung up the phone, I thought about it for 10 minutes. Well, I really wanted the guitar. You know, the first time you're getting a guitar, you'll get just about anything just to have a guitar. And it wasn't like they were offering me a Strat or something. It was pretty similar, so I was okay to go with it. Called them up, ok guys I want the prophecy, send it over. Two sleepless days later the shipping company calls that they got it in the office. I go to collect it, I open the cardboard box and I see the case having some huge dings, scuffs, scratches, always a huge scratch here and here. It was basically like a used case that was cleaned up well. I wanna make something clear for this next part. Sometimes as a customer I'm an a-hole. Usually I'm an a-hole. Back in 2011 I was Captain A-hole. But in this particular situation I was the most polite person in the world. And still got mistreated. I call them up and say, look guys I got all these dings, scratches, scuffs, things like that. I wanted another guitar, you suggested this one, I got it 10 minutes later. With all of these defects, scratches, dings, scuffs, you should have disclosed this with me. I wanna exchange it or wait for the Matt Heffy signature. And the guy on the phone goes, you can't do it. I'm like, what do you mean I can't do it? I'm like, I wanna be your customer, I wanna buy some more stuff from you. And I know a lot of people say this, but I eventually ended up buying a Gibson Les Paul Custom Silver Burst, the Buckethead Studio, and a lot of other pedals and guitars from there. But the guy says, you can't do it. Most cheap Chinese guitars are like that, this is not considered to be our problem. I'm a little shocked and I say, what do you mean it's not a problem, I'm a customer, I'm saying it's a problem. It is a problem. I wanna return it, it's ordered online. You can't do it. I'm a little speechless at this point, but I say, but you're gonna lose me as a customer. And then I got the answer that got my blood absolutely boiling. Well, our shop is not gonna bankrupt without you, man. This is one of the most unprofessional things that you can say to a customer. I ended up keeping the prophecy because they wouldn't accept it back, but I knew I didn't like it. Even as a beginner I felt this is not my guitar. I ordered the Matt Heffy signature from another place a month later and I was happy with that. I'm gonna explain in a minute why I prefer the Matt Heffy much more. I kept it for 3 or 4 years, I was living in another country, then in 2015 I moved to this one and listed it for sale. We started a band with the guy who bought it. 2 years later he sold it when our band split up. To conclude this little story, in 2015 I ended up moving here and starting work in this shop because the owner of this one is an amazing person. He knows a lot from experience for almost about everything and he taught me a lot. To explain the contrast between most shops and this one, in 2012 I bought a 4x12 cap for my angle fireball. 
the owner opened the shop after hours because I was traveling from another country, gave me the cap and gave me his personal cover to transport it. He said, you'll give it back in a month. I trust you. I promise I'm gonna tell this story in another video about how I met him, how I started working in this shop and so on and so on. The point of this story is that we haven't disappointed a single customer in 8 years or mistreated them. And the funny thing is we ended up opening this shop right next to the one that sold me the Epiphone and the Gibson so I got to know the guys that work there. I talked to this guy like uh, he was kind of a condescending asshole but so am I sometimes. He has a lot of vintage stuff and guitars and he is looking down to Chinese guitars like this. I can understand kind of but not, not very professional to say the least. But he said okay man it was a shitty day or something I, I don't know what happened. The moral of this entire story is that you shouldn't be an asshole to people in the music community. Almost everybody knows everybody, so if you act like an asshole towards somebody, it's gonna come back and bite you. Small world. The Prophecy series are basically modernized version of the Les Paul customs. They feature active pickups, blacked out hardware, some fancy control knobs, maybe a little too fancy in this one, I'm not sure the purple matches too well with the blue and yellow binding. It has this modernized look without the poker chip on the three ways, which for example still has the thicker Les Paul body, but it features this shreddier neck that has 24 jumbo frets. Those mother of pearl and abalone inlays that replace the lightning bolts are certainly a distinctive feature to the Epiphone Prophecy. And also not entirely my thing. So a couple of things I didn't like about the Prophecy. I didn't like the satin neck. I didn't like the 24 frets. I didn't like the rosewood fingerboard, the inlays, and knowing that the Matt Hafey signature had all that I wanted, the ebony fingerboard, the 22 frets, the axis neck in the back, and it was entirely blacked out, and come on, it was a Matt Hafey signature, I really wanted it. All that I told you made me dislike the Prophecy, but I must say, it's not a bad guitar, it's just not for me. As usual, I'm gonna freshen up this thing before I start working on it, and this is a good opportunity to test the new grip cutters from Music Nomad. I should disclose that none of my videos so far are sponsored by anybody, neither the shop or Music Nomad. I just happen to like the things that Music Nomad sells. The owner of the shop that I work in is kind enough to let me use this stuff here and let me review the guitars. Let's see if these are gonna cut it. Those frets could use some little shining, I'm gonna use the frying fret polish by Music Nomad and I'm gonna put some F1 fingerboard oil and I'm gonna show you what it looks like. This side of the fingerboard is old, this side isn't. It doesn't get much darker, so if you're cutting on putting some oil to get it darker, it's not gonna happen. Let's go over the specs. We have a mahogany Les Paul style body, a two-piece maple top, well I believe to be a two-piece maple veneer on it, a mahogany neck with a set neck construction, a satin finish, 24.75 inch scale length, 24 jumbo frets and a 14 inch radius. The headstock features the black Grover 14 to 1 ratio tuners. We have EMG 85 at the neck, EMG 81 at the bridge. Then we got the Epiphone Lock Tone blacked out hardware. Pickups out of the way reveal a couple of things, starting with the neck cavity. You see the neck joint, it's not a long neck tenon, but the body has been cut to accommodate for a little bit longer. Also you probably notice that the neck joint is offset towards the three-way switch. The routing for the three-way switch it's under the maple cap goes through the center of the guitar towards the electronics in the back and this is the bridge cavity. It's not painted because it had what I believe to be a QR sticker, you can see the corner of it. There was lacquered on top of it because you see the mahogany doesn't have any lacquer and on the top it has. It's bare mahogany under here, somebody removed the QR sticker that had lacquered on top of it. Unfortunately, I'm having a hard time finding the seam lines between the mahogany body and the maple top, but what you see between the pickups is a seam line between the two maple veneer parts of the top. No surprises with the EMG pickups, they feature the new stickers, made in USA EMG 85 and this one was made in late 2018, the guitar is 2019, it has the EMG golden logo on the top. This is the EMG 81, same thing, made in USA, the new sticker, made in late 2018, the silver EMG logo on top. You notice that the neck cavity is painted with the same blue paint for the body and the bridge isn't. That's why, because there was a QR sticker here and I asked the original owner if he had removed it. 
but he said nah he got it like this so somewhere in the factory someone messed it up and probably had to remove it which gave us an opportunity to see the mahogany the owner has no idea why the quick connect plugs for the emg pickups are marked with a silver marker as well so this must be made in the factory but the fact is that you don't need to do that you need to remember those three pins need to be facing down you see no pins on the bottom on the top they have the three pins so when you install them on the pickup it should look like this with the pins facing down most les paul's feature a curved top like this one so the pickup rings are curved and slanted the typical les paul controls a three-way switch then you got the bridge volume neck volume bridge tone and neck tone i also wanted to show you these in better light they have a mother of pearl top which is painted to be purple i'm not sure if it matches too well with the blue top and the yellow binding but they are there. Speaking of binding, it is cream multiply on the body and it is cream on the side of the neck. Black side dot and lace and the fret on this particular one were done alright, they don't overhang. Mine had uneven frets near the 20th fret. Back when I had mine, I did not realize that the block and lace are a combination of real mother of pearl and abalone. They are nicely done as well. Even though the Prophecy is the highest level of Les Paul Custom, I did not expect it to have Mother of Pearl, real Mother of Pearl in lace, and they are combined with the Avalon all the way to the 15th fret when they continue with just Mother of Pearl. For the price of 700 bucks that I got mine back in 2011, I wouldn't get mad at Pearloid. By specification, the nut is graphite, and this is what they call Mother of Pearl stick pin on the headstock. The logo on top of it also looks like Mother of Pearl, but I think right here they used Pearloid. Doesn't look like the Mother of Pearl on the fingerboard. A little bit duller, so I would call this Pearloid. The 1421 Grover tuners, which I'm not a big fan of, and the old style of Epiphone logo, not the inspired by Gibson new one. This is one of the busiest Trust Rod cover bells that I've seen. Les, Paul, Custom, Prophecy Plus. Did you get anything? Anything on the back? Nah held in place by three screws, gloss front, white, back. Next specs, 43mm at the nut, 1.69 inch, 54mm at the 12th fret or 2.12 inches. Thickness at the 1st fret, 20.2mm or 0.79 inch. Thickness at the 12th fret, 22mm or 0.86, shreddy. The thickness of the body is almost 50mm or 1.95 inch. Obviously the neck is the place that the Prophecy has most differences with other Les Pauls. Unlike most Les Pauls it has active pickups, 24 frets and a shreddy 14 inch radius. People who play a lot of lead stuff will appreciate the flatter fingerboard, I don't because I play rhythm and 12 is better for me. What Epiphone tried to do with the Prophecy is make a shreddier version of the Les Paul and this is evident by the satin finish of the neck as well. Most fast players prefer the satin or unfinished necks so their hand doesn't stick on the gloss. Epiphone are calling this a speed taper D-shaped neck profile and it seems rightfully so, it matches the whole shreddy theme of the Prophecy. The back features this cream multiply binding as well and the two cavities for the electronics and it is a see-through finish, it's not solid. I showed you on the beauty shots earlier, you can see through the mahogany at certain light and angle. The cavity for the three-way switch is pretty big and routed a little bit off-center. The funny thing is when they put the copper shielding on the cover, they tried to compensate for the cavity being a little off-center, but they didn't account that it will not match when you flip it. The Prophecy has active pickups EMG and I'm surprised they're not using the quick connect system. I guess these are cheaper or they needed to use those pots because of the maple top, they're on a longer shaft. Here's the electronic compartment in better light, all sorts of lines, different types of wood. I'm a little bit confused, especially by this guy here, this light streak of wood. It is supposed to be mahogany, but it looks like maple. What's going on with that? The active EMGs require a 9 volt battery for which Epiphone has an interesting solution. What they did is pretty simple but ingenious. They got the cover for the electronics compartment, the plastic one, they cut it and screwed a battery box on top of it. I must say I am pretty impressed with this simple solution. This way they avoided routing the body for the 9 volt battery. It has directional instructions inside for the battery placement. 
this is what it looks like with the 9 volt battery in place you're supposed to put it over this blue strap so you can remove it later on by pulling it once again bravo a great solution by epiphone i'm digging this the output jack features a black nut and a rectangular black cover the original epiphone strap button and one more over here satin mahogany neck and honestly i'm a bit surprised they didn't go with the set true neck construction or an access heel for this one they used it on the Matt Hefe signature but for the prophecy they went with the traditional set neck construction the serial number reads 190215 which is 2019 15 is the code for Qing Dao China most epiphones I review come from there here's a better look at the 14 to 1 ratio black grover it has a marking 6C and the C marking on the right side I'm gonna set it in E standard with the 1052 skinny top heavy bottom Ernie balls. The balance of the prophecy feels a little bit different than most less balls, but then again, it's different from most less balls because of the neck. It weighs roughly 4000 grams or 8.82 pounds. The cases for the prophecies feel like premium ones, that's why I was upset that mine was damaged. They feature some nice stitching and those sturdy latches 1, 2, tree and the sturdy leather handle which is pretty thick oops i forgot there was one more back here so four latches it fits the prophecy perfectly and it has this nice plush gray lining here it is without the prophecy and it has this nice compartment with the epiphone handle this is something i do with all of my guitars i put the empty pack in it so i know which kind of strings and gauge i have on the guitar some case candy that I will go through in a minute and the key for the case. In the case you have the owner's manual which I suggest you read at least once because it has some useful information about how to intonate and adjust your action. I wonder could they have fit a bigger epiphone sticker? Also included is this epiphone poster which has some interesting models in it. I will walk you through them slowly like this. Look at this Corina V and Explorer nice. A tree pickup HG, some basses, and then on the bottom we have banjos. Here's the other side of the poster.
Everything I said so far about the third generation of the prophecy is my personal opinion. I think that Epiphone tried to appeal to players who prefer the Eclipse series by LTD like the modernized Les Paul, but they did it to an extent like they said ok, it should be 24 frets but we are gonna keep the full thickness of the body. It feels like sort of a middle ground like they didn't go all in with the axis heel with the thinner body. It's like they said, we wanna make a shreddier version of the Les Paul, but we don't wanna anger the traditionalists too much. They did get braver with the new version though. The third generation of the Prophecy features a thinner body and a set to neck construction with a great high fret axis. Whichever Prophecy you choose, you can't go wrong.